Hello everyone, this is Dr. Gerig. We are studying labor economics and compensating wage differentials. This is part four. So if you haven't seen part one, two, three, please go ahead and watch those parts because it kind of builds up on those parts. However, in this part, we are diving into the labor market equilibrium and we'll also talk about an example uh, of a market for, for instance, uh, noisy jobs, noisy or risky, or any job with a negative attribute. Okay, so let's talk about this job market for noisy or risky. It could be risk, probability of injury versus quiet jobs. So we have wages here, which is equal to what you consume. We're going to assume, and in the x axis, we have probability of injury or the magnitude of the noise at job or risk of uh, injury, okay? So we are going to actually assume a utility function uh, for the first time. Remember, if we don't assume any form, we just assume a convex to this origin where the wages go up, utility goes up, where the probability of this negative aspect goes up, probability goes down. So you draw a new origin. We talked about this in previous parts. And you draw convex to this new origin, uh, a set of indifference curves, okay? However, we are actually going to assume an indifference, a uh, utility function, a set of indifference curves uh, that takes on this form. Your utility depends on your consumption. Consumption is going to be equal to your wages. You are consuming everything you earn. And also, it depends on your uh, risk that you have at your job. So, your utility increases in your consumption of goods and services, and it's declining in the it's declining in the negative aspect of the job. In this case, it's the loudness of the job, noise level, or the risk. Okay, so uh, utility function looks like this. C is the consumption of goods and services. So you consume everything, all of your wages. That's why wages equals to consumption. No saving or borrowing. And here is job noise. Okay, some negative aspect. It could be probability of injury. There, I still kept here probability of injury, but it's the level of noise. One is maximum, zero is uh, no noise. Alpha is the parameter. This is your sensitivity parameter if you have high alpha you are going to be more sensitive to risk or noise if you have low alpha you're going to be less sensitive so again your utility increases in wages so we put an arrow up here uh, in the direction of increase in happiness and your utility decreases in the probability of this injury or noise level so we put a arrow on the opposite direction direction of the utility increase because your utility decreases in this direction right as uh, this negative aspect increases so because it's negative you're going to see an increase as it gets close to zero so our utility curves are going to be this way however excuse me the utility curve utility function is defined it's a linear function so it's going to look like this, U0. U0 looks something like this, pulling from this, right? It's equal to, let's say, U0 level. So Y parameter is your wage rate. So pull that wage rate, consumption minus alpha N equals U0. This is how we drive this. So C, pull Y. Remember, we always have an equations. Y equals M minus or plus n x or a b it doesn't matter so this is the y axis x axis same thing i want to leave c by itself or wage rate so u zero plus this moves to the other side alpha n okay so here let us talk about this this alpha is a positive number, therefore it's upward sloping, right? See, so this is like y and x, this is the slope, this is the slope. This is the, it's going to be some constant number intercept here, okay? All right, so it's a constant number, u0 bar, 
and this is the representation. So utility will go up as you move to the northwest, okay? So this is U1 is a higher utility level, U2 is a higher utility level, but alpha is constant. So slope of this guy, slope of all of them, all these ISO um, utility, which is called indifference curves, right? I, I, I don't really, I shouldn't say that because we don't call them ISO utility, but it is what it is. ISO means equal utility, but we call them indifference curves in economics. Okay, so slope is alpha. All of them have the same slope, positive slope. So all these indifference curves give you the same person's indifference curve map preferences. Okay, so it goes up. Slope is alpha, which is positive. So this is alpha. What does it mean? You need alpha dollar compensation to increase the noise by small unit by one unit okay so there are two types of jobs assume that we have a noisy job that has absolutely the highest level of noise but it pays w1 we have a quiet job that has no noise level but it pays w0 presumably w0 is less than w1 so again let's put everything together utility function consumption this is wage rate minus alpha n noisy job N is 1, pays W1. Okay, so what's my noisy job? Noisy job utility. Job utility. Okay, let's call this U1. Okay, we're just going to plug in everything. We see C is going to be W1, the payment you receive, W1, minus... N is going to be equal to, <clears throat> excuse me, 1. So minus alpha times 1 alpha. Okay, so let's talk about the quiet job. Quiet job has zero noise but pays W0. Okay, so the consumption in this utility function based on this utility function Consumption will be equal to W0. The good news is the noise is equal to 0, so it cancels out. So these are your utilities in two different jobs. So this is an all or nothing decision. You can pick and choose the noise level. You will take the noisy job if U1 is greater than U0. That's it. Okay? So if you... Write these down, W1 minus alpha greater than W0. You will take the noisy job. So rearranging these, W1 minus W0. So difference in a noisy job minus the quiet job needs to be greater than your sensitivity parameter. Okay, greater than alpha. So for an individual worker, her supply of labor for a noisy job is as follows. Look at this. This is awesome. So now we put the wage differential here. Remember compensating wage differential, the name of the chapter. How much more compensation do you need to pick the risky job? So wage in the risky noisy job minus wage rate in the riskless quiet job. And in the X axis we have percent of labor supply to the noisy job okay so you need to have your alpha so if w1 minus w0 is greater than alpha you're going to work in a noisy job 100 percent so if w1 or minus w0 is over alpha you're going to work in noisy job you're indifferent here. We can assume you're going to work in a noisy job if it's equal to alpha. And you are, if W1 minus W0 is less than, which is this region, I'm going to shade it like this, less than alpha, then you're going to supply all your labor, labor to the quiet job. So percentage of labor supply to the noisy job going to be zero. Yes? So let's look at this drawing. I'm just going to erase what I put in because I do have really nice animation and slides. Slideshow. 
Okay, so it looks like this labor supply is 100% if W1 minus W0 exceeds this alpha. You're also here, you can assume. And if it's less than alpha, you're going to supply 0% of your labor supply to the noisy jump. So where does this alpha come from? It actually is very personal. It depends on the person. So alpha varies across workers. Large alpha means an individual is very sensitive to noise. Small alpha means this person doesn't mind noise. That means small alpha, you don't need a lot of wage differences to accept a loud uh, job. Large alpha means I require a lot of wage differences between quiet and the uh, uh, loud noisy job to work in the noisy job. So in a population, there's frequency of people with different noise, noise sensitivity. So distribution to noise sensitivity in population is, uh, is it's a normal distribution, okay? So we have people, alpha men, this, these people don't mind noise at all. These people are very sensitive to noise. I am personally very sensitive to noise, so I rec I have very large alpha, okay? And this is the average noise sensitivity. As you can see, there are few people who don't mind noise, few people who are very sensitive. On an average, people have average sensitivity, okay? So less sensitive, more sensitive. So you need demand side to get the equilibrium wage differential, okay? So... Assume that we know equilibrium wage differential. This is what the noisy versus quiet jobs are going to pay. By the way, this doesn't come out of thin air. This comes from somewhere. We're going to see in the next part of the slides. So assume that we know that, you know, noisy versus quiet job pays a certain, I don't know, I'm just making it up, $10,000, right? So people with... Less sensitivity will get this job. So these people, this is this is called a distribution. This is probability distribution function. Probability distribution function, PDF. People in this area will be working in the noisy job. Okay. So people who are in this area won't be working, including myself. So the, the portion of this distribution because the compensating wage differential is not enough to cover their risk, uh, risk or noise sensitivity. So imagine this is a distribution. Another normal distribution with low standard deviation, right? That means there's less in English. There's less variation among people regarding the noise sensitivity. So everybody in the population are distributed around the mean. Okay, so you're going to see nobody working at this job. So sometimes you'll see in developed countries some jobs with very unpleasant uh, attributes, they can't find people working at, the, at those jobs. Okay, so then um, we have other workers coming from other parts of country or countries fill out those jobs. Okay, so the blue, the initial... Initial PDF, probability distribution function, I showed you has a higher standard deviation. That means disbursement. Okay, so what does the labor market look like? This is the wage gap between risky and non-risky job, noisy or quiet job. So below, so below alpha minimum, right? If the wage differential is less than alpha minimum, nobody will work at this job noisy job or risky job we also have alpha maximum if the wage differential is greater than alpha maximum so it's here wage differential is right here so then everybody is going to work at this job okay so in the middle what happens in the middle this is basically my this is basically my oops this is basically my pdf you open it up so once we overimpose on this graph the labor demand, the intersection of labor supply for the risky, noisy job and the labor demand, you're going to get 
equilibrium compensating differentials and number of people percentage of people working in this noisy job okay who ends up working in noisy job less sensitive people will get those jobs who would hire people who are willing to work in a noisy job the firms that can adjust their they cannot adjust their production process to make it quieter you are an airport how are you going to make those planes quiet even if it's possible to make the job quieter it is not affordable affordable to do so so we're going to think about this and we know that jobs are different workers are different and we assume some jobs are noisy and firms can't change that so this is the labor demand number of such positions okay so this is the graph again number of such positions you have to fill out these noisy jobs so that's your equilibrium compensating wage differential okay so these are the people working percentage of people working in the noisy jobs so if the demand for noisy job uh, workers is perfectly inelastic just like in this case if the demand increases the number of workers employed in the noisy jobs will increase a lot okay so let me show you that you're going to see boom demand increases so number of workers working at these noisy jobs will go up a lot all right so equilibrium compensating wage differential will increase so Supp labor supply labor demand number of workers or percentage of workers in the risky job so let's apply this to risky jobs not just noisy the state wage differential number of workers so the supply of risky jobs slopes up because as the wage gap between the risky job and safe job increases we're talking about the supply more and more workers are willing to work in the risky job it makes sense the demand curve slopes downward because fewer firms will offer risky working conditions if the risky firms have to offer high wages as well to attract workers okay so w1 minus w0 star is the market compensating uh, equilibrium compensating wage differential in the market for compensating wage differentials so we are equating supply and demand for risky jobs so it's like bribing people to attract the last worker hired by the risky firms okay so in next part we are going to talk about the case where we can have actually negative uh, compensating differentials when people prefer the risky jobs i'll see you then